the fact that if I ask anybody in America who is the dumb one, that yeah. everybody will say Eric is a testament to the damage that 100%. SNL has wrought onto, onto to Eric Trump. I'm Tommy Vitor. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. And today we're going to be drafting the best Saturday Night Live political sketches of all time. It's not just that politics shapes Saturday Night Live. In a lot of instances, SNL shapes politics itself. It's yes. actually stronger than politics. So. Yes. Yeah, I think there's a lot of politicians where uh, we really remember the SNL version of them more than the person themselves. But we'll yeah. get into that later. All right, BTC, we're going to flip a coin. I think this is going to be a big coin flip this week. Big coin so flip. Let's see. I think we all know why. I think we know why. All right, call in the air. Let's go heads. Tails. With that said, don't forget that the dog is here for a reason. So I'm going to really have to lean into the pity vote this week. You're a very good dog. Very good dog. You're a very good dog. With my first pick, I'm going with Bob, just kidding, <laughs> Tina Fey spot on Sarah Palin. John McCain and I, we're a couple of mavericks, and gosh darn it, we're gonna take that maverick energy right to Washington and we're gonna use it to fix this financial crisis and everything else that's plaguing this great country of ours. When we don't know if this climate change, who's he, what's it, is man-made, or, <laughs> or if it's just a natural part of the end of days. There's a part later in the skit that I love too, which is like, <laughs> what about the talent competition? Did she busts out her flute? <laughs> when I think of Sarah Palin, I think of Tina Fey. I don't think of the real Sarah Palin. I was on the Obama campaign at the time, and boy, did we enjoy the impression that this made on the country. Remember in 2008, they picked Palin. People were worried for a minute because it was like this big surprise. It got a lot of press. And then she started doing interviews. And she did this extended series of interviews with Katie Couric. And every night they would come out and every night they would be worse. Be like, what do you read? She'd be like, oh, you know, all the papers, all the publications. Like name, like, name one single publication. Name one thing you read. She's <laughs> like a blithering idiot. And you know what? I appreciate that. Let's go with Hillary Clinton sings Hallelujah. Mm, iconic. It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major lift, the baffled king composing Hallelujah. 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 I'm not giving up, and neither should you. And live from New York, at Saturday night. Yeah, so obviously an iconic moment Truly. In, in, in SNL history. I, I Poignant, think, too. Yeah, that may have been the most famous cold open in recent political SNL history. Rob Schneider had come out afterwards and said that he knew that this was the moment that SNL was over as a comedy show. His quote was, don't do this, please don't go down there. And there was no joke at the end, and I went, it's over, it's over, it's not gonna come back. That was a quote from the arbiter of all things comedy from the star of Deuce Bigelow, Male mm -hmm. Gigolo. <laughs> like Rob Schneider, you, you might have been funny at one point, but you've just been carried by Adam Sandler yeah. for like 30 years. Are you suggesting that Hot Chick <laughs> was not was Is not that a real thing? Is that a real movie? Was, yeah. I, I guess, yeah, apparently I am. I am going to go with, this is going to hurt me, I think, but I'm going to do it anyway because I'm just a, a straight shooter. Where'd it go? Bush versus Gore debate. I would put it in what I call a lockbox. The lockbox, 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 the lockbox. Governor Bush, your response. I don't know what that was all about. But I will tell you this, don't mess with Texas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Will Ferrell is just iconic in this skit. He gets asked another question, his answer is pass. Uh, he asks this, his like one word summation of his presidency is strategery, which I think stuck with Bush for, for all eight years. But this debate between Bush and Gore was lost in the spin room. Gore lost in the spin room because it became about sighing, it became about his demeanor. And I think this SNL version of the debate where he says lockbox a hundred times and he's sighing from the very beginning, I think cemented that narrative that like Bush was the guy you wanted to have a beer with, that Gore was a little bit uppity and was sort of a snob and maybe you didn't want to let vote for him. Yeah. For my next pick, I'm gonna go with Eric and Don Jr. Now, now many people, myself included, have concerns <laughs> that your father could use his position to help his former business. 
Yeah, I know. You mentioned that on the golf course last weekend. <laughs> and I was beating you by nine strokes. But Eric and I did have a blast. I drove the golf car. Yeah. Yeah. Sure did, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that if I ask anybody in America who is the dumb one, that yeah. everybody will say Eric is a testament to the damage that 100%. SNL has wrought onto Eric Trump. Like, I maybe have heard Eric Trump speak one time. Yeah, is he the dumb one? I, I don't know. I don't know, but in my mind, he has, like, the mental capacity of a Jenga set. <laughs> I don't think Don Jr. is especially quick, but based on what they've done to Eric, that's just the reality now. Yeah, that, that, that's what we'll always believe. I am going to go with Matt Damon as Brett Kavanaugh. I'm going to start at an 11. I'm going to take it to about a 15 real quick. First of all, I showed this speech to almost no one. Not my family, not my friends. Not even PJ or Tobin or Squee. <laughs> this is my speech. There are others like it, but this is mine. I wrote it myself last night while screaming into an empty bag of Doritos. <laughs> it's just so funny. In terms of an impression, in terms of just like purely being funny, this one probably deserves to be a little higher. Yeah. But unfortunately, Brett Kavanaugh is now a Supreme Court justice. Yeah, yeah. Joke, the, jokes on, yeah, jokes jokes on, on us. us. Yeah, the whole thing sucks. But Matt Damon really nailed it. There came a point where SNL just became relitigating the exact words that were said by these people. Yeah, and they just, would quote them verbatim. Yeah, because <laughs> what else can you do? You can't even, you can't even like, satirize any yeah, of this stuff. Yeah, it's beyond parody. Yeah. Truly. Okay, for my next choice, I'm going to do The Many Faces of Donald Trump. According to Section 5, Paragraph 2... I'm allowed to have mistresses, provided they are younger than you. As I was saying, everyone loves me. I even got this fat piece of crap behind me now. <laughs> I don't say outrageous things just for poll numbers. I speak from my heart. Really? Okay, because I hear your numbers go down a little this week. Mexicans are stealing our children. Our jobs are fleeing this country. They're going to Mexico. They're going to China. <laughs> You know, Jesus did some incredible things. Some would call them miracles in terms of fish and with regard to bread. <laughs> Lack of fish and bread, you know. The very complicated history for SNL is when Trump came down his little staircase and, and called all Mexicans rapists, NBC cut ties with him, and then SNL invited him to host less yeah. than six months later. Yeah, there is like a long history of like even even uh, Jimmy Fallon bringing Donald Trump onto his show and like mussing his hair, yep. and uh, there is a degree of normalization when you bring them on your air. So I guess what is what is the line between having this, you know, major figure in, in American culture, right, and lending your airwaves to him. When pressed on what happened, some of the, you know, muckety-mucks at NBC said things like, at the end of the day, he was on the show for 11 minutes, and it wasn't like the earth fell off its axis. It was a highly rated show, and that's always a good thing, and he's the front runner for the Republican nomination. He's good fodder for comedy. It's like... Well, if it a, was highly rated... Yeah, it's, it's just this bloodless vision of politics. Like, yeah. well, if it's good for business, you know, let's do yeah. it. Well, at least we've come back from that. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, we learned all our lessons. <laughs> I'll go with Bush Sr. I think we have a clip. And just to show you, I got the message, and I got it. <laughs> Gonna write it down. Message right here. Message being written right now. I'm moving the implement that will form... The letters that will spell said message, the message that I got. And here is that message. Hi, George. Well, Dan, my little vice president. Very funny, they always have a just an actual child playing Dan Quill. <laughs> this is Dana Carvey doing George Bush, H.W. Bush. Uh, another impression that I think people remember better than the real thing. Yeah. Not going to do it. Thousand points of light. Wouldn't be prudent. It's like all these things that are just like iconic and burned into your memory. And also, I think, was massively helpful for Dana Carvey's career. Right. Once Bush gets elected over Dukakis, like the guy who does the Dukakis impression, John Lovitz, not getting a lot of calls anymore. Yeah. But, but, but Dana Carvey is. And I actually think that Bush and Dana Carvey became friends over the years. And he really? would like, do the impression for him and come on the show. So it's just like, interesting how much this can change your life. Okay, for my next choice, I'm going with Bill Clinton and McDonald's. Let's show the clip on that one. All right, boys. 
Let's stop in here for a second. I'm a little parched from the jog. McNugget is released from Great Britain to Somalia. Intercepted by warlord. This guy's Malaya fish sandwich. Aid from Italy. Warlord. I love that sketch so much. It also does make me so nostalgic for the 90s. Uh, like, like the the old school crew neck uh-huh. t-shirt. Uh, Just Bill Hartman in general. Yeah, yeah. In general. <laughs> Yeah, so this was based off of, uh, I guess, Bill Clinton actually did go jogging and ended up in a McDonald's. I think they jogged two and a half miles and then they went to a McDonald's, which, you know, a touch counterproductive. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised the Secret Service let this all happen. But yeah. yeah, it's a, definitely like pre-9-11, a little exactly. more innocent time. Yeah. What would happen if when you were with Obama in the White House, if he decided he wanted to pop into a McDonald's? Well, like one time he just decided he wanted to walk and get coffee at, at a Starbucks nearby and it was a fucking freak out. Yeah. You know, the service hates it because, you know. Understandably, like yeah. they, they need to be able to plan to really protect him, and God forbid some yeah. wacko is out there. Yeah. But uh, it pissed Obama off to no end to feel locked in a cage in the White House. I'm going to go with Ask President Carter. Hello, hello, Peter. I- is this the president? Yes, it is. Do you have a question for the president? Uh, I, uh, I took some acid. <laughs> Peter, what did the acid look like? Um, they were these little orange pills. Were they barrel shaped? Uh, yes. Okay, right, you did some orange sunshine, Peter. <laughs> just remember, you're a living organism on this planet and you're very safe. You've just taken a heavy drug. Now right. just relax, stay inside and listen to some music, okay? Yeah. Do, you, do you have any Allman Brothers? <laughs> we, we think of Jimmy Carter as this like older statesman, yeah. peanut farmer, evangelical Hab- Christian. Habitat for Humanity. Habitat for houses. Humanity. When he ran for president, it was like post Watergate, so everyone was looking for like some sort of anti Washington breath of fresh air. But also, he was boys with the Almond Brothers, okay. and that made Jimmy Carter seem cool. And the yeah. Almond Brothers at the time were like they were rowdy. They did a ton of drugs. The band was multiracial. It had black members. It had white members. So it was seen as this like really hip like yeah. counterculture thing. And so that skit is sort of a take up on that, which is like. Carter doing this goofy kind of fireside chat with an anchor and he's getting and he's just talking down a dude who had taken too much acid like he's got personal experience with it, which is just very funny. This is also a testament to what SNL was like before you had direct quotes that you can just transpose right into the characters like where they actually could still satirize these people other than just using their their exact words. Before they were clowns. Yeah. Okay. for my last choice here, I'm going to go with uh, Big Sleeper. This one should really take it home for me. Uh, We have Bob Dole at the real world. Real world, Chicago. Who the hell ate my peanut butter? Peanut butter. I guess I did, why? Yeah, well, it's all gone. I don't know, something about exit polls in one of the states being wrong or something like that. What state? Good God, woman, did you get a name? No, I'm sure if it's important, I'll call back. Obviously, an iconic moment from Norm MacDonald, who had an amazing career at, at SNL. Our younger audience probably doesn't know what a big deal MTV was, the real world, like it was real, all real, people watched. Real world was like, was it. I mean, it was like the main reality show it, before there were all of the reality, right. before reality show just like- Before took, like Survivor took yeah, over, yeah. Yeah, so this is all everybody watched. And I mean, yeah. This one was really iconic. I remember people, like friends of mine being like, no one eats Bob Dole's peanut butter. It was just <laughs> so funny. Like we talked about Bob Dole on the show before. The guy's a war hero. He was injured by a German artillery shell while he was fighting in World War II. And he came back and he just sort of like seemed weird and aloof. And Norm MacDonald did this impression of him speaking about himself in the third person and it just stuck. Yeah. Don't suffer through the Republican debates alone. Come join us on the Crooked Media Discord. If you go to crooked.com slash friends, you can talk with us, chat with hosts, meet other friends of the pod, get ad-free episodes, get bonus content. It's a lot of fun. Go to crooked.com slash friends, become a friend of the pod, do it today. All right, well, that's our draft now. So we're each going to take a quick 30 seconds, make our pitch for you, and uh, as to why you think we should each win this draft. And Tommy, you went first, so you make your pitch first. Winning the toss is a big deal. Okay, my first pick was Tina Fey's impression of Sarah Palin. It is the GOAT SNL impression. This is like the LeBron James of liberal tiers draft picks, like the surest sure thing in the history of the show. Uh, the Bush versus Gore debate sketch was hilarious, and I also think it truly impacted the narrative around who won the debate and impacted our political history. Uh, Matt Damon's impression of Brett Kavanaugh is incredible. He is just like a perfect, screaming, ranting, raving lunatic, but unfortunately, 
The joke is on us uh, because he is in the Supreme Court. Uh, Dana Carvey on George H.W. Bush is another iconic impression that I think in many ways uh, is lasting longer and more memorable than anything Bush himself said. And then finally, you guys might not be like uh, big Jimmy Carter stands, but I think this this sketch about Jimmy Carter is fun because it's this moment in time when Jimmy Carter, who we all think of as this like serious evangelical peanut farmer, was actually seen as hip and dialed into the culture because he was like an Allman Brothers fan. So that's why I destroyed you. Here's why my list is better. Let's start off with Hillary Clinton singing Hallelujah. And, you know, if we're talking about iconic moments, it's hard to find one more than this. It was simple and powerful and poignant. Everyone was waiting for this moment. And in the sense of a moment that just captured where we were as a society, it was this. Eric and Don Jr., the fact that if I ask anybody who the dumb one is, everybody immediately says Eric shows just how potent Saturday Night Live remains to this day. The many faces of Donald Trump shows how SNL captured Donald Trump's essence over the years and how they got so good at it, there was no daylight between the real thing and the parody of him. Bill Clinton and McDonald's just helped define this guy as just a regular dude but also highlighted some of his vices that even in the middle of a jog, he couldn't help but go and grab a burger. And then finally, Bob Dole at Real World. This is Norm MacDonald just capturing the cultural phenomenon that was MTV's Real World in the 90s. And look, before any of you cast your votes, just know this. My dog, he's very sick. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. Please help him. Un- he's, he's very sick, and what will cure him is your vote. It's the only thing that can bring him back. In the Bob Dole skit, he has a puppy, and he's, like, on the floor playing with the puppy rolling around, and the puppy pisses all over one of the housemates and stuff. It's so good. No one eats Bob Dole's peanut butter. Okay, Brian, so as everybody who watches this show knows, for some reason we've decided to incorporate a punishment. I lost the last episode. You made me eat the hottest chip known to man. You were a stand-up friend and ate some yourself. I still have not recovered. I've not felt normal since that day a week ago, so thank you again. But I did win this time with 60% of the vote. So you're up in the punishment category. Now, a few weeks back, we talked about the phenomenon of MAGA rappers. Forgiato Blow, Vivek Ramaswamy. (laughs) There's just, you know, (laughs) some of the best and the brightest in the rap game. We were thinking it would be cool if, like Vivek, (laughs) you could lose yourself to the music in the moment. (laughs) It's time to lose yourself, man. Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Tyler Cohen. If you had one shot, one opportunity, sees everything you ever wanted in one moment, capture it or just let it slip. Yo, his palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already, mom's spaghetti. He's nervous on the surface, he looks calm and ready to drop bombs. But he keeps on forgetting what he wrote down. The whole crowd goes so loud, he opens his mouth, but the words don't come out. He's choking how, everybody's joking now. Clock runs out, time's up, over, plow, snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity, oh, there goes gravity. Jokes, he's so mad, but he won't give up that easy no. I don't fucking know where I'm at. <laughs> Lose yourself in the music the moment you own it. You better never let it go. Only your one shot and not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime, yo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. It's so nice. hard to follow the it's music. Impossible. Oh my god. Wow, it's impossible. none of you grew up that's, in Michigan. That's, <laughs> that's uh, awesome. Was that that's the awesome. whitest thing I've ever done in my life? <laughs> so that's our show. Please let us know who you think won this round. This this um, punishment thing is getting going a little too far. Going a little too far, but maybe it's not going far enough. Mm? Oh, God. Explaining to my wife, she's like, so you can't move or parent your daughter. Why? Because you do a YouTube show? That's weird. Comment, subscribe, tell your friends about the show. We love doing it. Um, and uh want people to see it. See you next time. Yeah.